Right. Okay. I'd like to call this meeting to, to order for GFW Public Schools. Today is February 20th, 2024. The time is 6.02. I get a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make that motion. And a second. So. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion is approved. School and community recognition, the GFW school board. Yeah, so congratulations all of you. It is school board recognition month. So in honor of all of you and the work that you do, uh, I have written something up that I'd like to read, if that's okay. We don't have to stand up or anything like that for this one. You can sit back and just relax. So um, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of our community, parents, teachers, and students. Today, I sit before you, I had originally put stand, but we're doing a little bit different. Uh, I sit before you with a heart filled, heart filled with gratitude and admiration for remarkable individuals who serve on our school board. Their dedication, selflessness, and unwavering commitment to the betterment of our community and success of our school district deserves to be celebrated. When we think about the role of a school board, we often think of them as a governing body responsible for making critical decisions about our schools. However, their impact reaches far beyond the boardroom meetings and policy uh, discussions. They are the backbone of our educational system, the guardians of our children's future, and the driving force behind the positive transformation we see in our community. Through their efforts, our school board members advocate for policies that ensure every student has access to a high quality education regardless of their background or circumstances. They champion an environment where every child feels valued, supported, and empowered to reach their full potential. But their contributions extend beyond the classroom. Our school board members are deeply invested in the well-being of our community as a whole. They collaborate with local organizations, businesses, government agencies to address the diverse needs of our students and families. From providing resources from mental health support to fostering partnerships that enhance career readiness, they work tirelessly to ensure that our communities thrive. Moreover, our school board members are leaders and role models, inspiring others to get involved and make a difference. They lead by example, demonstrating integrity, compassion, and a relentless commitment to serving others. Their dedication inspires us all to strive for excellence and to never stop working towards a brighter future for our children and our community. In conclusion, let us take a moment to express a heartfelt gratitude to the members of our school board. Their contributions are immeasurable, their impact profound, and their legacy enduring. Together, let us continue to support and uplift one another as we work towards a future where every child has an opportunity to succeed and our community thrives. Mm -hmm. Members of the board, thank you for your service to GFW Public Schools, our three cities, our four townships, and 17 counties. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Uh, visitor recognition and public comments. Danny has something. You didn't just have something. I just have something. Um, I won't stay for this. So I just want to update you on something, some fun, exciting things we have happening at the middle school high school this week. So this year to celebrate or this year to celebrate FFA week, Ms. Bullish, Ms. Wood, and myself have organized a CTE college and career fair for students in grades eight through twelve. Um, our CTE fair is just around the corner. We're gearing up for students for an event for students that they will not want to miss. So here's a rundown of what's in store for them. It'll be this Friday from 1 to 3 15. Each grade is going to be dismissed during a certain time. We'll have an FFA member dismiss them. And then like eighth grade, I think is from one to one thirty, and then so on. So they each get a half hour time slot with the juniors and seniors having close to 45 minutes at the CTE fair in the gym. Uh, Ms. Goldbush, Ms. Wood and myself have lined up an awesome mix of colleges, universities, and professionals from various industries to give the students a taste of what's out there beyond this GFW school walls ranging from military, two-year and four-year colleges, agriculture, manufacturing, healthcare, floral design, farming, construction, public safety, and more will be coming. 
Um, we have local businesses, we have un local universities, as well as businesses and universities that are traveling from Western uh, Minnesota, Northern Minnesota, uh, the Twin Cities, and we even have some coming from South Dakota. While the students are eyeing that dream college or still exploring uh, career or post-secondary options, this is their chance to gather information and ask questions and get inspired. Students should expect uh, everything from interactive food, interactive booths, pull-up bars, like pull-up bars. <laughs> and they first said pull-up bar, I was like, um, this is for high schoolers. <laughs> They're like, no, physical pull-up bars. Um, games, soil samples, CPR mannequins will be brought in. Um, equipment that these companies may use on a daily basis, and so much more. This is our first CTE Fair of a larger event here at GFW. Over the past two years, Ms. Golish and Ms. Wood kind of hosted two separate ones, like a CTE one um, for AG, and then Ms. Wood would do a college and career readiness one for the students. So this year we decided why not put one larger scale event on for the students. We have like 45, or 46 exhibitors or vendors that will be coming. Um, our hope is that this year's success will lead to um, even bigger and better opportunities for students here at GFW. So we're really excited for it. There's been a lot of work that's gone into it. Um, the big part will be on Friday, just getting everything all set up and um, just watching the students shine and their interest in what they are, what they all gain from it. So we're really, really excited for the opportunity. Do you have any questions or anything? It'll be on Friday afternoon. No? Was there an organization or something that got it all? Was it FFA or? Uh, no, it was me, Ms. Goldwish, and Ms. Wood that put it. Like, okay. We just reached out to, I think, over 100 different oh, wow. businesses, universities. We had a lot of good response. A lot of them um, said, we might not be able to make it this year, but please keep us for future years. So we're hoping that we can continue to grow and expand with this. So I would say 45 for our first year is, is pretty decent numbers. And I know Ms. Wood has, or Ms. Goldfish has already established some rapport with these businesses because they've come two years prior for these last two years. So I just, I do think that will have continued success. I must really commend you for that initiative. Yeah, it was just, we just put our heads together and they're like, well, why don't we just do one? And they talked to the students, like the FFA students, they're like, yeah, we'd rather just have one and one big one for all of us to go to. So we said, if that's what you like, then we will go ahead and get it put on. So yeah, it's been fun to see all of the local businesses really participating in it too. It is Friday from? Friday from 1 to 3.15. Yeah. All afternoon. Even Kay, Kay and you think Kay and you Jay's gonna be there as well? Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, moving on to informational items, uh, Superintendent Report. All right, thank you, Chairman Sh Ripple. Uh, starting off, I wanna announce that we have a kindergarten kickoff coming up. Uh, that is gonna be March 5th. And so all prospective families can come and join and check out GFW. A lot of amazing things happening here. Obviously, the new facility has been something that we've highlighted a lot. Um, also want to remind people that we started a two-way dual immersion program this past year. And um, of our three section, three classes in the kindergarten section, our largest class. And uh, it's uh, we knew that people would fall in love with this program, but it's happening much faster than we realized. And so uh, we definitely encourage people that are interested in enrolling our district to get to that March, uh, March 5th kickoff. They can call the school district or go to our website, get more information. But uh, definitely a great event, a uh, chance to, get to learn a little bit more about GFW and some of the great programs we offer starting right away in kindergarten. Um, some uh, pre K 12 updates for everybody. Uh, our bid opening has been pushed back a week. Uh, Krauss Anderson recommended that we push back the bid opening a week because there was an addendum that was completed. Uh, they look at this as a good thing. It just gives a chance to get a few more bids in there. So no concerns about timeline or anything like that. Now, one adjustment that this will make is we will not be looking to approve bids through a special meeting uh, before our work session in March. We'll do that at all the we'll do all that at the regular meeting in March. So we won't have to have to a special meeting or anything like that. Um, the bid opening um, will be largely online. I'll make sure board members you have a link if you want to watch it. I believe the process they will follow is they'll probably announce the low bid and the high bid, and they're just going to go through. It'll probably take two hours, maybe even longer. Um, 
uh, but from the time of bid opening to the board meeting, they'll get a chance to go through that, sift through it, get more information. Uh, they're going to, I've asked them to put together a, a, a tracker for you too, if you want to track anything. Um, I have not seen that yet, but I will keep you updated if I do get anything from them on that. Uh, also on March 1st, um, I will be going down to Mankato to meet with MnDOT. Um, I believe I'll be joined by Sibley County's Tim Becker and we might bring some other folks as well. Uh, we have applied for a few different grants for infrastructural improvements, which will connect the uh, city of uh, the downtown area of Gibbon to our site. Uh, and that has a crosswalk, it has uh, pathways, uh, even potentially lights uh, on, a, on a lit pathway, and then paths that would go throughout our complex and through the different amenities. People can walk, people could bike. Uh, we could even put a, a Nordic ski path in there if we wanted. So there's a lot, a lot of ways to access our site, uh, but making sure that people can access it safely. Uh, they would cross in town. Um, there's a couple points in town where they could cross, but eventually uh, we're looking at getting across. Uh, the last point would be at Ely Avenue coming across, and then there would be a sidewalk on the north side that would extend up to our property and then kind of spread out in there. Um, all of those pathways are in the MnDOT right away, which is good news. So there's no need for additional land purchases or other things that you sometimes get involved in. So that's some great news on our pre-K-12. Other than that, we're really just kind of in a little bit of a holding pattern until uh, we get our bids in a couple of weeks. Uh, legislatively, we kicked off the legislative session here. Um, so the 24 legislative session convened on Monday, February 12th. Uh, and legislators have until Monday, May 20th of 24 to finish their work. Uh, because the legislature passed and the governor signed a new budget during the 23 legislative session, the focus will be on capital investment bill, uh, policy issues, technical fixes to last year's budget bills, and potentially a supplemental budget bill. However, it is not typical that Minnesota does pass a supplemental budget bill, but um, there will probably be some conversation about that, just as there was two years ago. Uh, we kind of got to the 11th hour two years ago and ended up nothing happened. And if I had to make a prediction, I would expect the same outcome on that, but you never know. Uh, in terms of budget forecast, uh, in December 23, the Minnesota Management and Budget, or MMB, released the November forecast and projected a $2.4 billion surplus for fiscal year 24-25, but it showed structural imbalances in future fiscal years. However, a monthly budget projection indicates an additional $384 million higher than expected revenues for fiscal year 24. MMB will release an updated budget forecast roughly February 28th. This will give the governor and legislator updated projections, and that's key on whether a supplemental budget bill may or may not happen. So we'll wait to see what happens here in the next uh, week. Uh, some things that are coming up right now is uh, a hot topic right now is the clarification of school resource officers. Uh, there's been some questions about that um, after legislation was passed this past year. Uh, there's currently a House and Senate file that clarifies the use of phone restraint for school resource officers, establishing training requirements, policy requirements for law enforcement agencies, and contract requirements and agreements for school districts and law enforcement agencies. That's something we'll be monitoring closely as it works its way through the legislature, and we'll, we'll see kind of how that progresses. Um, we also have our, our agenda, the legislative agenda that we discussed briefly at our uh, at our uh, work session. So we have a few things on there, including uh, reintroducing legislation that would bring a million dollars to each of our three towns, uh, three million in total. That is would be done through a bonding bill, and that is this is actually a bonding year. So we do expect to see a bonding year, and this would be a good year for that to happen. So um, we do have another opportunity beyond this year if, if we don't get it, but. Uh, this, we have some good opportunities here, I think. Um, I've met with some legislators on both sides of the aisle, and there seems to be some interest in it. So we'll see where that leads to by the end of the session. Uh, lastly, I think just some exciting things that happen. Um, Member Turtle, I know this is your favorite topic. Um, last couple uh, conferences we went to at the Minnesota School Boards Association, and then at a conference I was just recently at with superintendents on artificial intelligence and uh, computer science. And what does that mean for education? I don't have an answer for you tonight, but um, you know, I think a couple of things to take away is it's it's here to stay. And so the question is, is how do we work with it? And not it's not something that people are viewing as something that would replace 
things, but how do you work with it? How it's going to be part of what our students use in the future as they go to employers and they're going to be looking for skills. And so what does that mean? And, and I don't know. And I don't, I think it's just going to be an ongoing conversation. It's very new, but uh, I, you know, we, I watched a presentation where there was a, um, they had built a graphic human being avatar and you ask it a question and interacted back with you and answer questions and as well as articulate as you you could imagine and these technologies are there now and they just become more available to people they become more available to staff so uh, those are things that we're going to have to continue to learn about just like any new technology over the last hundred years and uh, we'll have to understand what that means for us but uh, Minnesota is actually considered pretty far behind as we talked about the MSBA conference and computer science. Uh, there's currently some work being done uh, at MDE about, you know, what maybe needs to happen in terms of computer science and are there courses that need to, that need to be required? Uh, nothing at this point, but it might be coming down the pike. AI has been around for a long time. If you ever search for anything on your phone and all of a sudden start getting ads about it on your phone, well, that that's AI in action. So it's not a new thing, but I think it's accessibility and the two-way communication that's offering potential for both staff and students is interesting and brings up lots of questions. So uh, I don't have an answer for you, but something I'll continue to learn more about on and update you on as we go. And and we'll see when there is. It's exciting, but also uh, it makes you pause a little bit sometimes too, right, Remember Turtle? <laughs> so um, that is the end of my superintendent report. Thank you. I have one question. You said yeah. the largest class was a kindergarten class? Uh, of the three, we have three kindergarten classes right now. Of those three, the largest one is uh, the Spanish immersion. Oh, okay. That's what you're talking about. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Yep, no problem. <clears throat> oh, thanks. Um, do we have any elementary, middle school, or high school reports today? Uh, we do not. Uh, uh, one of our principals is at the basketball game, and the other one had a conflict that just came up today that they're not here today. So, but reports are in the packet. Okay. Yep. They're not in the packet. <clears throat> the Dasher report was in the packet, and so was your school board representative information and the board reports. Uh, executive committee was just a standard monthly meeting. Um, finance facility and long range planning committee, which is pretty much what uh, Superintendent Lorton said we're in the holding pattern right now. Mm -hmm. Pretty much just waiting. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, policy committee. And there too, we went through, we're through all the ones we need to for this year, are we not? Uh, we're just getting, for the, the ones from the first part of the year, we're through, so now we're into the second half. Okay, okay. A couple, of them, a couple of new ones that we have to change, keep up with the state. Yep. As they bring them out. There's about 10, correct? Mm -hmm. And we're going to bring those to our work session. Um, I thought there were some 27 policy changes, right, this year? Oh, boy. Yeah, I can't remember the total, uh, but there's there's uh, a lot. No, there's a lot. I think we're still figuring out what happened in the past legislative session. <laughs> uh, community Engagement Committee? Mm-hmm. Uh, we met today with a uh, potential partner for changing our mascot, uh, met with Scott Schrader, um, and he kind of explained to us the process of how they would be a partner to us in uh, rebranding what is currently the GFW Thunderbird and what that would look like in all the um, uh he called it a style guide, putting together a style guide with everything that we would need for jerseys, um, any colors that go into the new school, um, banners, uh, murals, score tables, anything that has the GFW logo on it. Um, they talked about what that would look like if we were to partner with them. Um, we, after, I mean, we just chatted a little bit and have a couple of follow-up questions that came up that Dr. Horton is going to reach out to ask to um, scratch uh, Mr. Schrader and seeing if um, Erin will probably bring those to the work session in March. And uh, 
BSN's largest partner is Nike. So, anything else that I missed? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on to consent agenda. I get a motion to approve the consent. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. And a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Set is approved. Moving on to resolutions and action items. <clears throat> a action item, school calendar 24-25. Get a motion to approve the school calendar. I'll make a motion to approve the school calendar. And a second. I'll second. Uh, any discussion? Did that last time. Okay, good. <laughs> All those in favor, raise your hand. <clears throat> Motion is approved. Uh, B, legislation, <coughs> legislative agenda 24. So the platform for 24 is one, GFW will advocate for an increase in the ag to school credit from 70% to at least 85%. Two, introduce legislation of the Minnesota House of Representatives and Senate to bring up to $1 million in economic development funds to each of the following cities to support transition of GFW school buildings given Fairfax and Winthrop. Three, raise the cap, allow additional facility projects to qualify for above the line spending and expand the use of long-term facilities and maintenance revenue. Four, no new unfunded mandates. Get a motion to approve the Legislative platform. I'll make a motion to approve the legislative platform. And a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? No. All those in favor, raise your hand. Platform is approved. Uh, C, registration guide rotation A, 24 and 25. Get a motion to approve the registration guide. I'll make a motion to approve the registration guide for and, rotation A. And a second? Second. Any discussion? No? All in favor, raise your hand. <clears throat> registration guide ro rotation A 2425 approved. D, construction project expenditure change order approval process. Sure, I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, I believe this is included in your packet as well. Um, uh, this is, uh, and I think just for the public, they may like to hear this. So this was uh, a letter from Krauss Anderson written to the board um, regarding uh, construction projects, expenditures, change order approval process. The district needs to have in place a process for dealing with potential cost expenditures and work changes during the upcoming construction bond project. Due to the nature of the project work, items will come up that need to be considered and dealt with um, exponentially. exponentially. Sometimes evolving added costs and use of project contingencies. Krauss Anderson and Wold, our construction manager and architect respectively, have recommended some general guidelines that will help keep the project moving smoothly through the process and keep us on schedule. Please remember that change orders don't always involve just cost items, but can also include requests for additional time as well. Suggested change order process. Typically, Kraus Anderson and Wold will utilize a very formal process to document and ensure that change orders requests, uh, requests received are valid and within cost guidelines. Once these two parties have signed off on the change request, it will be forwarded to the district for formal school board approval. However, sometimes with the project, uh, the speed of projects is recommended that Superintendent Horton be authorized to approve cost expenditures and changes values up to $50,000 or less on behalf of the district. Ultimately, these changes will still go through the process described above for each affected contract. All changes to be considered or recommended in excess of $50,000 will be brought to the school board for its final approval following the review process described above. Throughout the construction process, Krauss Anderson will provide the board with periodic status reports of the project, including a separate update report of any and all change orders pending or approved. Your approval in this process is greatly appreciated. Please let us know if you have any questions or concerns about the process. So um, in summary, uh, because of the nature of projects and the speed in which things have to happen, 
they're asking that the school that the superintendent have uh, authority up to fifty thousand dollars for those change orders. That information would still come to you as board members, uh, but if it needs to happen at a faster pace, then then I could go ahead and sign off on that ahead of time. And but it would still come to you through their documents, um, and you would still see that all those happen. And that's fairly typical for progress. Are we updated with those at work sessions, regular meetings, emails? How are we updated on, um, you know, any change um, orders that have been made? I would say it could be any of the above. Um, it would definitely come. We could do it at, at any of those. We could choose to do it at every meeting. Um, if I get them, I can also send them off, but um, they will document those. So if, if there's a if the board has a request to get them more frequently than once a month, if they want it, if you want it at both work sessions and regular meetings, we could do it twice a month. Uh, they'll be keeping tally as we go, so I think it uh, they would be happy to probably do it at the, as often as we like. Okay. Um, hopefully, there's fewer change or with a new project. Hopefully, there's not quite as many change orders as you get with a uh, renovation project. That's where they get a little more messy. Open up a wall, and then gosh knows what you find inside. <laughs> So, but there will be some, and that's pretty typical. Any other questions? <laughs> Get a motion to approve the construction projects expenditure change order approval process. And a second. I'll second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Motion is approved. E, resolution acceptance of donations. Whereas Minnesota statute 465.03 requires a school district to accept donations by resolution expressed in the terms prescribed by the donor in full. And whereas acceptance of the donations in accordance in with the donor's terms is in the best interest of GFW schools. Now therefore be it resolved that GFW schools does accept the below Describe donations from said organizations in accordance with the terms set forth herein. Be it resolved that GFW wishes to extend a grateful appreciation to these various individuals and organizations. Uh, <clears throat> Jim Winesettle, amount $50,000 for the new school. And Sibley County Cancer Fighters, $300 for the high school industrial projects. <clears throat> so they were able to help... Uh, cancer patient with their car because they had car trouble and uh, were able to get them to their appointment sometime. And they sent a card, Dave and automotive class. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time and helping Sibley County cancer fighters help a cancer patient with a car problem. Mode. We really appreciate the help and hope to work with you in the future. Sibley County cancer fighters. Could I get a motion to accept the donations. I make a motion to accept the donations. And a second? I'll second. Having a motion and a second. Julie, would you call the roll? Ariel? Yes. Rosa? Yes. Reyes? Yes. Marco? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Resolution is approved. Any other things we need to chat about before adjournment? Um, do we have we have to take the low bids on any, or is there any discussion on warranty or anything like that? Or usually it's low bid. Uh, it's low bid is what you're supposed to take. CFO Heine, do you want to talk about the exception to the low bid? Yeah. So um, in state statute, it is the lowest bid unless during the vetting process and looking at their bid documents, they did not comply to what the requirements of the bid were. Um, then that rules them out. So if there's an underlying factor um, that substantially um, makes it not a qualified bid, then we would go with the next bid in line from that. So that's why they have their vetting process to go through and make sure that it's in line with all the requirements of the bid process. Or let's say um, the lowest bid came in and that vendor um, has struggled with timelines or there's just many things unknown where that vendor might not be able to complete the project there those dot things can be documented and um that vendor would not be accepted what about if some companies say you're putting in lights in a football field and they had 
twice the warranty as uh, another one. Is that taken into consideration or just a little bit? No, all that stuff is taken into consideration when they go through the bed. That is taken into consideration. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've heard that similar question lately. You know, they want quality too. Mm -hmm. So just have to work with it the best we can, I suppose. Anything else? Got to get a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. And a second? A second. Seconded. All those in favor, 